talk we think growth in our economy had come to a dead halt the way it actually had back in 1980 when the American people decided to throw the opposition out. The American people remember 1980, I think, soaring inflation, growing unemployment, the highest interest rates since the Civil War. When we took office eight years ago, we made it our simple aim to get big government off the backs and out of the pockets of the American people. We cut the tax rates, we reduced regulations, and we controlled the growth of government spending. The truth is that under the, this administration, we've witnessed the longest peacetime economic expansion in the history of our nation. The opposition talks about growth, we've delivered. They talk about jobs, we've delivered. They talk about opportunity for minorities, and I have to admit, this especially irks me as though we were 
far departed. The truth is our economic expansion has done more for minorities than any big spending program could ever hope to accomplish. Indeed, one economic observer has written that, and I'll quote, on every front, jobs, income, even household wealth, the years 1981 to 1986 represent the best five years in black history. I listened to those speeches and I couldn't help thinking that this is what the difference between us comes down to. They talk, and we deliver. George Bush will cut taxes again. What would their nominee do? I mean, what would he really do? <laughs> yes, they've come out with their platform, but it's a platform that in effect hides their real policies in a ground paper wrapper. Well, this is one of those choice moments when information and duty happen to coincide. Throughout this campaign, I'm going to give the American people the truth. I'm going to give the opposition. Well, maybe I better just paraphrase Harry Truman. <laughs> I'm going to tell the opposition the truth, and they'll think it's hell. <laughs> <laughs> that was just to open the meeting. We'll get on. <laughs> well, <it's probably> <laughs> <laughs> so is the campaign underway then? <laughs> Started it <laughs> well, sir, are you going to let the plant closing bill become law without your signature and uh, uh, avoid a little of the uh, flack that might otherwise come down? Bill, I've got one rule. I never talk about re bills or legislation until it reaches my desk. So, and I can see exactly what's in it. So, I can't comment. On you're, giving Mr. you're giving Mr. Baker any advice about you, the vice president ought to be? I thought he was here to give me advice. <laughs> <laughs> We have no conversation on any subject of that kind. You really think Thank you can you. get contra aid, Mr. President? More contra aid? I would hope that intelligence on the other side has developed and that would make that possible. I don't think there's a, a moral reason or any kind of reason that would justify our not supporting the freedom fighters in Nicaragua. Thank you. Thank you. Anything new on uh, the hostages? Any new contacts with Iran today? <coughs> no. pre-convention and pre-election periods. And then I'd like the floor for a word or two at the end of the meeting. But let's start with Bob Dole in the Senate and then Bob Michael in the House. Give everybody a chance to comment. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I think just, I'm certain everybody has this information, but uh, what we're doing now, we're on Labor HF. No introduction, sir. Except for President. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, I've got my family to introduce here. Yes. Mr. President. Hello. My wife, Kay. Hello. Yes, Kay. Hello. Thank you very much for today. We've we'll missed you very much. <laughs> Scott. Yeah. Nice to see you again, Mr. President. Nice to see you. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> my mother, Lucille. Brought us over there. <laughs> My father, Tony, brought us. Hello. Good to see you. <laughs> My mother-in-law, Lillian Holmes. Hello. Good to see you. My father-in-law, Harry Holmes. Hello. Good to see you. I think I'm going to take you over here in front of the fire, please. <laughs> Building. The rest will be coming here eventually. It's a pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit to Commander James A. Broadus, Civil Engineer Corps, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following citation. For exceptionally meritorious conduct and the performance of outstanding service as Commanding Officer of the Presidential Retreat, Camp David, Thurmont, Maryland, from July 1985 to July 1988. Commander Broadus consistently demonstrated professional competence of the highest order performing all duties with great distinction. His command provided the highest degree of support, the ultimate in security, and the perfect atmosphere for presidential and head of state visits. Commander Broadus provided vast improvements in perimeter security, air threat assessment, and emergency response. Through his dedicated efforts, the readiness and capabilities of the presidential retreat are unsurpassed. He also improved the quality of the environment for the people in his command who in turn established impressive re-enlistment and promotion standards. Commander Broadus' uncompromising professionalism, extraordinary, extraordinary knowledge, and steadfast devotion to duty reflected great credit upon himself and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. Thank you very much. And it's a much more beautiful and practical place since you've been there. Thank you very much. We've seen a change in the period we've been. Oops. There. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sir. Congratulations. I really appreciate this. I can't. I'd like now, to bring Kay and the boys over. Yes, we will be with just before we do the picture. Scott, <clears throat> you know, it just so happens that in this job, I'm the honorary president of the Boy Scouts. So I have something to sign, which I'm sure you're aware of. And that is, that I'll give you the envelope for that also. That is that you are now an Eagle Scout.
and get some souvenirs of that. Thank you, Mr. Preston. If I might uh, take a moment, Mr. President, in time, uh, the gents up at Camp David uh, asked me to give this to you. This is a, uh, a replica of our Camp David sign, uh, pin set. Maybe you find a place for it. If not here, maybe out in California. But <laughs> you bet I will. On the back, it says, uh, with deepest appreciation from those who serve you at the presidential retreat, 26 July, 1988. Thank you very oh, much, my sir. My goodness. Well, Jim, thank you. Yes, sir. That's wonderful. And I've seen that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to say that, uh, uh, you know, in the military they teach us uh, good leadership is taking care of your people. And uh, you have done such a good job of taking care of the people at Camp David and recognizing them and, and giving them attention. When I know that the schedule was very busy and the time demands and you were very great. And, uh, I just, uh, it made my job very easy as commanding officer, and uh, just wanted to thank you for that. Well, now that was turnabout's fair play because you made mine <laughs> a lot easier. <laughs> and we all appreciate it. We've enjoyed our three years. Well, we do. I'll never well, forget we it. Really enjoyed having you, and yes, sir. I think you, all of you, should know it's a far more attractive and better place since they've been there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And good luck to you. Uh, throughout the rest of your presidency and then on into uh, to California and late January. Yeah, I have a little fight with myself as to just whether that'll be the office in California or the home or, <laughs> <laughs> or the ranch. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all of you. Thank you for having us today. Yes, sir. I bless you. Very best wishes. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> We're smiling, but this is a sad occasion for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a real experience. It's been a wonderful experience for you. It's been about two minutes. Good evening.